Uh, General Electric, one of the biggest stories out this morning, their earnings uh, certainly closely watched as an indicator of financial and industrial health of this country. Uh, General Electric has been called the symbol of American business to the world. Uh, the stock today is trading uh, a little bit under $12 a share. But according to independent research firm Newport Value Partners, there's still a good case to short GE since way back in August 2007. I've been saying this, had already recommended shorting the stock when it was trading at around $38. Why so negative on the company? Charles Ortel, managing director of Newport Value Partners, is here to tell us why. I know you've been listening to the conference call just wrapped up. Anything in those comments from Jeff Immelt that makes you change this position you've been advocating for so long? Uh, none at all, and thanks for having me on, Margaret. Uh, what is really surprising to me about, about GE in particular is that they have all of the facts that, the, at command that they could show us. And instead of making full and fair disclosure, in my view, they're making very limited and sanitized disclosure. At this stage, if you contrast you know, the papers they put out this morning versus what J.P. Morgan did yesterday in a more complicated financial services business. The fine details are few and far between. What, what do you mean sanitized? I mean, earnings conference calls are scripted, you know, with an inch of their life. What is it that you're saying here on GE's front? GE, you know, people think it's a complicated business. I actually think it's a very simple business. There's two pieces. There's the financial services business. They provide audited financial statements for that entire business and for its principal subsidiary, GE Capital. Those businesses trade in relation to tangible common equity. Very straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, the industrial side of the business, group it all together. Yes, there are many moving pieces, but that side of the business trade in relation to free cash flows. And they must now know today, 17 days into a month, they must have a pretty good view of what the free cash flows are of the industrial businesses, yet they choose not to disclose them. We will find those out later when they re release their cues sometime around the end of this month. But when I looked back in 2007, and as we've been watching it forward, the free cash flows coming out of the industrial side of the business, on the non-finance businesses, are not strong. And that's particularly surprising given the fact that this business is a global market leader around the world. You would think that if any business was going to do well in troubled times, mm -hmm. a business like GE could take share away from weaker competitors and produce strong cash flows. Well, some might say that looking at CIT, if indeed they do have to do have to go into bankruptcy, that there might be some market share gains to be had in commercial lending. Well, you know, CIT's business model, in my view, is fundamentally flawed. I mean, the basic idea behind a commercial finance company is that you borrow short and lend intermediate to long. Mm -hmm. That seems like a genius set of moves to do in declining nominal interest rates, right? right? Your asset values go up, your funding costs go down, your reported earnings go up. You seem very smart. But in the reverse case, and our, our firm believes we have a very pessimistic global macro view. We think we are already in a stark co competition for global capital. We think nominal interest rates are going to go up. And in that type of environment, as nominal interest rates go up, asset values fall and funding costs increase and your margins get squeezed. And we just think that the CIT business model and indeed the GE capital business model are mm -hmm. dangerous places to be. Well, Emil said he's going to shrink the, the uh, GE capital unit overall. That doesn't hearten you in any way, saying that we're going to shift more and look at the industrial portions of this business. I mean, what would you have to see to make you feel differently? This business needs equity capital. Last year, Emil was saying, you know, he was buying a stock back. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, I think, proved to be a very <laughs> unwise move. Uh, but this and business, slash the dividend. <laughs> and the, the, the business has tangible common equity in its entirety of $10 billion. It has net debt of about 450. That's a very high ratio of debt to tangible common equity, and I think it needs more common equity. Okay. Charles Ortel, thanks for joining us on set. We do have to go, but very quickly, you said the stock should be trading at $2 a share. Do you still believe that? Uh, uh, Imagine this business without government help. It has a massive amount of government help, and it cannot continue to retain that help. All right. Thank you so much, Charles Ortel. And today